Hi, it's Stephen Keith from Brownells, and today we're going to bring you another gun from the vault. What are we looking at, Keith? We are looking at a Japanese Type 2 paratrooper rifle. Very nice. That mm -hmm. is a takedown version yes. of the Type 99? Yes, that is. It's pretty much just a chopped down uh, version of the 99 infantry rifle. So, did this, uh, did this gun see a lot of action in World War II? I mean, are the Japanese known for airborne assaults? No, not really. Uh, 1942, they did a airborne assault, Sumatra, Dutch East Indies. Uh -huh. And what, how this really came about was that operation right there. They dropped the troops, say, over here, and then a couple miles down the road ended up where they dropped all the rifles and the supplies right. and stuff. They put them in canisters, or, yep. as I understand, because they didn't want them each jumping with a full-length rifle? Correct. Yeah, which yep. I don't blame them. That's a big rifle. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't work out too good. Well, that, that same thing happened to the Germans in Crete. Right. Yeah, supplies need to be with the troops and stuff. Yeah. So uh, upper echelon saw the issue, said, okay, we're going to fix this, so we're going to make a breakdown rifle that's compact that can go with the troops and so tests started out there was a type one which was a had a cut right here and a latch on it and a, uh, a hinge but the trouble was that the stock in the hinge was real brittle it didn't have only shortened it about like so yeah it's still a pretty big package yeah and so they went went back to the drawing board and come up with a type two which the barrel would thread into the receiver and it used interrupted threads. Yeah. Now the trouble is with putting pressure on threads, we get stretch. Yeah. Especially with a big cartridge like 7.7. Seven. Right. So that didn't work out either. So then they come up with a bright idea of the Type 2. Let's take this apart real quick. So you got metal to metal contact yep, up metal there. metal to metal contact. And then. And something this, unscrews. Yep. Pull this wedge right here out to the side and then so it pulls straight it yeah, you don't have to turn straight. it like a bayonet rock. exactly uh you'll see right here here's a cut in here that's made at an angle and as that is the gun is fired and then there starts to get slop in there the screw which has this wedge attached to it you can start twisting it in right it just drives the wedge as far as it needs to yep. go to Make right. good contact. Right. So, so you've mean, got an automatic uh, slack taker upper yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah, takes up the slack right there. Yeah. Uh, it's really ingenious. It's, it is. In its simplicity, it's great. Put that wedge in, tighten the screw up, and then you're good to go. Nice and simple, yeah. which is how it should be for a military gun. Exactly. These were made uh, specifically from late 1943 to early 1944. Mm -hmm. There was around 20 to 21,000 of these made at Nagoya Arsenal. No other arsenal made them in Japan. And they had the standard Type 99 aircraft sights. And it came with a monopod, I'll bet, originally. Uh, actually, it? these did not. Okay. Yep, the 99 did, but the paratrooper rifles did not. And then they used a different type of cleaning rod which was for the shortened up rifle. Put that back. Now this, this model's always been kind of collectible, even mm -hmm. 20, 30 years ago. Oh, absolutely. Whereas the standard Arasaka, not so much. No, there was hundreds of thousands of the Arasakas made. And this was a fairly limited production gun and just didn't see a whole lot of action, if yeah. any at all. And yeah. most of them mainly set up because after the operation in Sumatra, Japanese really didn't do much airborne operations after that. Mostly naval operations, yep. I think. Big naval operations. Now the way that this would have been issued to paratroopers was that the bolt, well, let's see. this would have been out. Now, there would have been a, a chest rig, basically a pouch that would have had the rifle right here or the that and that. Oh, oh, so not bound to their leg or something, right? Like a leg bag. Yep. Huh. So there was a, a rig there that had that covered up. And then whenever they got on the ground, 
and they would have assembled the rifle and took off. But they just never, never saw any paratroop action. Well, at least you knew your rifle was going to get there with you. Yeah. That's the big thing. But yeah, that's that's a pretty pretty simple, straightforward design. I mean, it's cool and it works. Pretty hard to mess up. Yeah. And since there was only around 20, 21,000 of these made, these are have gotten really expensive on the collector market. Yeah, for sure. You don't see them much at gun shows or in gun no. shops anymore. No. Now this one has the mom ground off of it, for which is standard. Typical. Yep. Of uh, Japanese were never Weapons were pulled from service, those were ground off right. and everything. Sort of like if you see any of the, the old Argentine firearms that was surplus, yep. the crest was ground off on that. Now this right here designates, I believe, pronounced, forgive my uh, pronunciation, Nesiki, which is type two. And then over here is our arsenal markings, which designates Nagoya Arsenal. But really cool, really neat gun, chambered in 7.7 .7 Jap. Right, in super good shape, just not yeah. all that beautiful to look No, at. it's just the, <laughs> the Japanese did not have the best looking guns, but they were effective. Oh yeah, yeah, that's for yeah. sure. Cool so. gun. So, if you have any questions about the uh, Arasaka rifles, if you have any comments, if you've got one of these and want to tell us about it, leave us a comment below, we'd like to hear from you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time when we bring you another gun from, from the, the vault. vault.